Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is going to get you ready for your upcoming quiz in your Integrated Math 1 class on geometric sequences and exponential functions. Let's get started here. So um, uh, our quiz looks just like this, you guys. So just a little bit different numbers and stuff. So here's the first one. Uh, write an explicit rule for a geometric sequence with a second term of 5 and a third term of 10. Okay, so our explicit rule is, this is called our nth term rule. So this, this right here means our nth term. This is our first term, and r is the, uh, the rate, the rate of change, or the ratio, the righty divided by lefty, I like to say. And then it's raised to the n minus 1 power, n being whatever term you're looking for, okay? So a sub n is your nth term. There's your first term. And R is the rate of change, and you can get it by picking any two numbers and do the right one divided by the left one. Okay, so above, some of the books, um, and our book likes to write it A times B to the X minus 1, or A times B to the X. It just depends, whichever one fits, but uh, B to the X minus 1 or N to the X, uh, R to the N minus 1. Those are the ones that we're going to be using here, okay? All right, so, um, uh, so here we have, um, uh, it says um, uh, right up here, it says with a second term of 5 and a third term of 10. Okay, well, we need the first term in our formula. And then so it goes the first term, the second term, the third term is, we don't know the first term, but there's the second term, there's the third term. So we'll use these two numbers right here and do the right number divided by the left number. So 10 divided by 5 gives us 2. So that's what R is right there. Okay, and then to go backwards, you guys, so if you think, when we go to the right, it goes times 2, times 2, times 2. But when we go to the left, we go divided by 2. So to get a sub 1, we're going to do 5 divided by 2, uh, which is 5 halves. And I like writing it like a fraction right there, because a lot of times we've got to multiply fractions together, and it's just easier. So don't, get a, don't be afraid of fractions. I know most of you guys are um, from your horrible grade school classes on fractions I don't know it's they're 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 really not that bad anyways I'm sorry so there's our first term right here so our first term is uh, 5 half so a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 and r is that 2 right there okay so now I can find the 10th term the 20th term the 100th term by just plugging it in whatever term right there if I want to find the 10th term then it would be 5 halves times 2 to the 10 minus 1, or 2 to the 9, because 10 minus 1 is 9. Okay, so simplify without having negative exponents. Okay, so here we have powers raised to power. So we have 16 to the negative 1 half power, x to the 3 fourths power, and all of that's to the second power right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put everything to the second power right there, okay? So powers raised to powers, we multiply those powers. So I'm going to multiply these two guys together. So one negative one half times two, and then three fourths times two also. Okay, and we're just multiplying the powers. Okay, so we can cross cancel. The two cancels uh, this two, so we can cancel these guys and make them one over one. We still have the negative here, and then this two goes into two once, into four twice, so so here we get uh, negative 1 and 2. So if we rewrite that, that's going to get us 16 to the negative 1, x to the 3 halves power. And then remember, negative exponents, if it's in the numerator, then it gets flipped. It goes in the denominator. So put them in the bottom, and it becomes a positive exponent. So 16 to the 1 is just 16. So there's our answer x to the 3 halves over 16, okay? All right, so here, evaluate uh, f of x equals negative, and then it's negative 2 to the x for x equals um, uh, 4. Okay, so we're going to plug in 4 right there, okay? So let's go ahead and do that right where x is right there. Okay, so it's, it's, um, it's this negative 2 to the 4, okay? This negative right here is this guy right here. This doesn't get touched until the very end. The only thing that we're going to manipulate is this negative 2. We're going to multiply it four times. So here we go. So there it is, four times. Okay, now notice I'm not going to do anything with this negative. I'm just going to start multiplying this negative 2 times this negative 2. A negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, and then we'll multiply this 4 times this negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Okay, one more time. And then negative 8 times negative 2 is going to be a positive 16. 
don't forget we still have this negative that tags along with it till the very end so the answer is going to be negative 16 okay all right so what is the tenth term of this geometric series okay or sequence i'm sorry so remember um uh, our a sub n formula or our nth term is given a sub one which is our first term times r to the n minus one Okay, so what we can do is pick um, uh, any two numbers and do uh, righty divided by lefty. Okay, we can do this divided by this, or this divided by this, or one ninth divided by one twenty seventh, and then uh, invert and multiply. Or if you can see, it's going times three times three times three. So as you go to the right, that's what r is times three times three times three. So r equals three. Okay, now we know that this part right here is going to be 3 to the n minus 1. And we know our first term, here's our first term, is 127. So we're going to put 127 times 3 to the, um, t uh, I think it said 10, mi yeah, 10th term, so to the 10 minus 1. So let's go ahead and plug in the 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. Now that's a big number, you guys, 3 to the 9th. And you can do that 3 times 3 times 3, 9 times. Just be careful right there. Or you can also recognize that 27 is a power of 3. It's 3 cubed. So if I replace that 27 with 1 over 3 cubed, then we multiply it by 3 to the 9th, and then just slide it right underneath. And you guys remember when we have um, uh, like x to the 6th over x to the 4th? I'm sorry, x squared. It's x to the 4th because we subtract these exponents right here. So if we did the same, these bases are the same, so it's going to be 3 to the subtraction of those exponents, 9 minus 6, I'm sorry, 9 minus 3 is 6, so, so 3 times 3 times 3, and then another 3 times 3 times 3, you end up getting 729. Either way would have done that just fine, you guys. Or you could have done this, you guys, uh, right here. You could have done, if you recognize it was times 3, this is the first term, the fourth, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. So just keep multiplying by 3, times 3 is the 5th term, times 3 is the 6th term, and so on, all the way up till you get to your 10th term, it should get you to the same 729. Alright, I don't think your teacher really wants you to do that, they want you to be able to uh, represent it with the formula, but whatever. And you can just check your answer that way. So a ball is dropped from a height of 18 feet. Okay, so a ball, you know, if, if this is my 18 feet and it goes down, okay, and then after one bounce, it goes up eight, 18 times 0.75 to the x power, where x is the, uh, the bounce number. So what will the height of the third bounce be to the nearest foot? So we're just going to plug in 3 right there. So f of 3 is going to be 18 times... Um, 0.75 to the 3. So if we just multiply 0 0.75 times 0 0.75 times 0 0.75, um, I can do that on this calculator. I don't know if you can see me punching in the calculators right here, but 0.7, ah, it's not going to let me. Come on, calc. It's not going to let me. Anyways, 0 0.75 times 0 0.75 times 0 0.75 gets me that decimal. And don't round it till the very end. Then I'm going to multiply 18 times that, and I get about 7.6 feet. Notice it said in the directions round to the nearest foot. So always try to answer it uh, in the context of what the question is asking. Okay, so state whether each of the following sequence is geometric, arithmetic, or neither. Okay, so geometric is when it goes, when you go to the right and it goes times r, times r, times r. So let's see. So negative 1 times negative 3 would get me 3. 3 times negative 3 would get me negative 9. Negative 9 times negative 3 would get me 27. So this one's geometric, okay, because it's going times 3 times 3 times 3. Let's see what we're doing here. Okay, so negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Uh, negative 3 times 3 is not 5, okay, it would be, be negative 9. So this one's not geometric, so if it's arithmetic, let's see if it adds the same amount. Negative 1 to negative 3, that goes down by 2. Here it goes up by 2, up by 2. So this one's neither because it's not adding the same amount from each term. It's kind of tricky. looks like it is, but it's not. How about this one here? Negative 1 to 4. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, times negative 4. Let's see. Time negative 4. No, that won't work. Uh, plus 5. 4 plus 5 would be positive 9. That, that, I'm sorry, this is, yes, this is plus 5, but this is, this is, um, uh, this is not plus 5, it's minus 5, and then this is plus 7. So this one's neither also, okay? How about this one here, okay? So let's see, can you see that this is going plus 3, 
plus three, plus three. We're adding three all the time, so that one is arithmetic, okay? All right, how about this, you guys? So if f of x equals negative two times three to the x and g of x equals negative two times 0.5 to the x, determine if it's true or false. Okay, so they have the same intercepts. Okay, it's, it's probably helpful to just draw a quick graph of these guys. Let's go ahead and do that, you guys. So remember, um, in my class, I just taught you, because um, uh, exponentials are either going to graph like this in the J curve, we call it, or backwards J curve. It might go, it might go down like this. Okay, and it's always going towards the x-axis on our graph right here. It might be an upside-down j going up towards the x-axis right here, or it might be an upside-down backwards j going towards the x-axis right here, okay? In the next module, we're going to move them away from the axes, but for now, it always approaches the x-axis. So I told my students, just plug in x equals 0, x equals 1, and it'll give us a quick graph. So let's plug in 0 right here. We'll plug in 0 right here. I think I did 1 in red and 1 in green. I did. Okay, so I get negative 2. So that's the x-intercept right there. I'm sorry, that's the y-intercept right there. 0, negative 2, 0, negative 2. So I saw one of the questions. They have the same y-intercept, so that's going to be true. Okay, they do have the same y-intercept. It's at 0, 2. Okay, so f of x and g of x have the same domains. Well, that's just your your um, x values. Well, let's go ahead and finish this off. Let's plug in. Let's see what the graph looks like. So when we plug in um, uh, 1 right here, we get um, plug a 1 right here, plug a 1 right here. So here we get negative 2 times 3 to the 1, which is just negative 2 times 3 or negative 6. Over here, uh, 0 0.5 to the 1 is 0 0.5 or a half, so negative 2 times a half is negative 1. Let's just draw a quick graph of those guys. So on this one here, I'm going to graph um, 0, negative 2, so it looks like right about there. These are going by 2s. And then we'll graph 1, comma, negative 6, so half a square over is 1. Down 3 squares, that would be negative 6, so we'll graph those. We'll go ahead and graph these, 0, negative 2. And then this one's going to be at 1, negative 1, so over a half a square, down a half a square. And that'll give us a general idea of which direction we're going, okay? So, so this one here, remember it goes towards the x-axis, so it's going to go up like this, okay? This one's going towards the x-axis also, so it's going to go up like this also. So there it is right there, those graphs right there, a real rough draw graphs right there. So there they are. So they have the same domain values, okay? So the domain is, does it go left and right the same? So this goes to the left forever, goes to the right forever, it's going down, but it does go to the left and right forever. So I'm going to say that that's true right there, because this one goes to the right over here, and it does go to the left. So they do have the same domain values. How about the range values, okay? It goes down forever, and then it comes up towards the x-axis, which is y equals 0. Same with this one, except it's backwards, but it still goes down forever comes up towards the x-axis, which is y equals 0. So it does have the same range. Okay, uh, let's see, how did I do that? Uh, so that's true, that's true. Okay, so the, it says both are in quadrants 1 and 2. Remember, this goes 1, 2, 3, 4. So these are both in quadrants 3 and 4, not 1 and 2. So that one's false right there, okay? All right, so um, given the graph of y equals to negative 2 thirds times 5 to the x, tell whether the end behavior is true or false, and just draw a quick graph. Okay, we're going to do what we just did, you guys. We're going to plug in x equals 0, x equals 1. So if we plug in x equals 0, remember anything to the 0 equals 1, so negative 2 thirds times 1 is negative 2 thirds. And then we'll plug in uh, x equals 1, so 5 to the 1 is 5, so negative 2 thirds times 5 is negative ten thirds okay so if we graph that zero negative two thirds these are going by two so zero negative two thirds is just a little bit I don't know right about there I guess and then over one square down ten thirds which is three and a third so there's two so there's three right about right about there okay if we graph those two points we can see it's going in that direction now we can talk about end behavior so as x goes to negative infinity that means as we go to the left this graph is going up towards y equals zero Okay, I'm going to say that one's true, okay? And then as x goes to positive infinity, so as we go to the right, this graph goes down. It doesn't go up, so this one's false right there. Okay, it's going down. It's going to negative infinity, so that'll make d true. 
Okay, as x goes to ne uh, infinity, again over here, y is going to negative zero. There's no such thing as negative zero. It's just zero, so that one's false also, okay? So I get those as the answers right there. Okay, almost done, you guys. So complete the table to find the values of the exponential function. f of x equals negative 2 times 1 half to the x. Okay, so they did one of them for us. They plugged in negative 2 and they got 8. Okay, so if you plug in, let's plug in negative 1. I'll remind you what we do with a, a negative exponent, okay? So when we have a fraction to a negative exponent, we flip the fraction and it becomes a positive exponent. So we have negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. So we get the ordered pair negative 1, negative 4. Let's plug in 0, okay? So we're going to plug in 0 right here. So 1 half to the 0 is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So we get the ordered pair 0, negative 2, 0, negative 2. All right, let's plug in 1. 1 half to the 1 power is just 1 half. Negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1. It's like taking half of negative 2, which is negative 1, and plug in 2, okay? So when we do uh, 2, uh, 1 half to the second power is 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4, so we get negative 2 times 1 fourth, um, which is negative 2 fourths, which is negative 1 half. So we're going to go... Uh, 2 comma negative 1 half. And then I think the second part says graph all of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph negative 2, 8. So we'll go, these are going by 2. So to the left, a square down 8 right there. And then to the left, a half a square down 4, which is 2 squares right there. 0, negative 2 is right there. 1, negative 1, so over a half a square, down half a square. And then 2, negative a half, so over half a square down a fourth of a square. So we get those guys right there and connect them up with a, a nice groovy curve. And, and there's our answer. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. And take care. And hey, good luck on your quiz. I hope you guys do really well.